Right, so we're here at uh, Mobile World Congress. So who are you? Hi, I'm Sridhar from NVIDIA. So what do you do at NVIDIA? Uh, I do technical marketing and outbound communications for NVIDIA and uh, here at uh, MWC, uh, very excited to talk about Tegra 4 and Tegra 4i. Uh, as you know, Tegra 4 was launched at CES, the world's fastest quad-core A15 mobile processor. And Tegra 4i was launched uh, last week. It is our world first integrated LTE mobile processor that has a quad-core uh, Cortex-A9 Revision 4 CPU along with our 60-core GeForce GPU and uh, supports brand new technologies like the Chimera computational photography engine and the integrated LTE model to deliver great performance, great end-user experience and uh, you know excellent battery life. So the Tegra 4 is, uh, is huge. I mean, it's, it's the most powerful ARM processor ever Exactly, on it's on the it, planet, it, is it? definitely it's uh, powered by quad A15 cores and uh, recent uh, benchmark art articles that uh, press publish confirm that we are the fastest uh, mobile processor uh, in the market today. That means there are uh, development kits, what you call it, uh, reference boards or something, so people can test it already? Yeah, we've been giving out uh, reference boards and development kits to our partners and our developers to you know optimize Tegra 4 for their applications. So what do they? What can they do to optimize? Uh, they can, uh, you know, optimize their games, their applications. You know, s you know, study the app profiles and tune it to make sure that you not only get great performance but also great battery life. So you announced 72 core GPU for there for that. Right. That's also for the seven uh, Tegra 4i. Uh, Tegra 4 has 72 core GPU, while Tegra 4i has a 60 core GPU. So uh, 72 core GPU for the Tegra 4. What does that mean? Uh, it means great gaming experiences, great uh, you know computational photography experiences, um, you know really smooth uh, UI transitions and uh, long battery life. Is it the best GPU ever? Or for uh, device? I'll let you guys decide that. Once you get Tegra 4 powered devices, you'll certainly see that uh, games optimized for Tegra 4 you know deliver great visual quality, great gaming experiences, and your features like always on HDR, tap to track, and your photo experiences will you know. Make make it uh, you know one of the most powerful uh, GPUs out there. So what are you showing here, for example? Uh, out Tegra here 4? we have a demo of our always on HDR uh, uh, photo experience, and we have Doug here who can uh, talk a little bit more about it. So there's a Tegra 4 in this tablet, and uh, you are demonstrating HDR video. Even. Correct. So. Just get mic'd up here. So how does that work? So basically what we're doing is uh, uh, with, with high, dynamic, high dynamic range, the challenge is um, uh, taking a picture where you've got the, the, both the foreground and the background exposed properly. And the way that camera phones do it today is they take two separate images and then fuse them together. Well, the problem with, there's several problems with that. One is the preview, you never know exactly what you're going to what you're going to get until the the, the uh, images are fused together. So the first thing we did was give you a live preview. So we're doing this in all in the uh, in the processor. This is a, uh, oh, oops, sorry. sorry, it's a live preview, so you can see exactly what you're going to get. The background is exposed properly, as is the foreground. Uh, the other challenge that with the, with taking two pictures separately is that uh, if there's any motion in the picture, you get bad motion artifacts. All right, we've solved that problem as well. I've took here's a picture I've taken with my hand waving, and what you see is backgrounds exposed properly, foregrounds exposed properly, and my hand is in focus. If you t see that on a standard camera phone today, what you would get is um, motion artifacts. You'd see multiple fingers uh, th th instead of having just uh, the, 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 the three to four fingers that are in the picture. But how can you do that? You don't have two cameras behind? It's not two cameras. We do a very interesting thing with uh, in one in one frame, we do two exposures and we basically separate out the light and dark ex dark exposures, do the processing on them, and, and then put them back together. So because of the with the Chimera architecture, we're able to do that in real time because we fuse the power of the CPU, GPU, and ISP, and so we have got plenty of processing power to do the computation. That's, it's very computationally intensive. So you have a special camera hardware that does the two exposures at the same time, or is uh, it most of the new sensors uh, coming out uh, and will enable that. This one is uh, is an Aptina sensor, but Aptina, Sony, uh, working with, with with most of the sensor uh, vendors to enable... Uh, Those are to, new sensors that can do that, right? They're, they're, they're new, but they're, they're just the next generation of sensor. It's not, they're not, uh, you know... 
it's not a very you know it's not just the it's not just a, a, a specific sensor. It's the next generation sensor that that will offer that. So somehow the light comes in and splits up into how does it work? Uh, how it works is a little is, is our secret sauce. Is and how secret? We're, yes, that's kind of how we do it. So are you going to be the only one supporting HDR video like that? Uh, Sony actually supports it with their sensor, but they do it in, in the ISP, so it's it's locked to video. That's all it does, uh, and we're, so we're the only ones that do this full breadth of computational photography that allow you to do anything. Basically, we're showing three vertical examples, but really what we're really showing is the architecture, which is an open API that allows software developers and OEMs to add whatever computational photography features they'd like. So you need more computational power to actually do HDR compared to a normal 1080p, right? Absolutely. Is it twice as much, or is it...? To do what we're doing, the 30 frames per second in the traditional process would take 30 gigaflops of processing power. In a traditional process, not in our way, but we do some, you know, some. Thirty gigaflops. Yes, because it takes about one gigaflop to do a to do a to do a one frame, and you imagine it at thirty frames per second, it's thirty x that. So you so. do ten eighty p sixty frames per second HDR. What do you do? What is the We do ten eighty p thirty frames per second HDR. Yes. It would take a Tegra five to do four K HDR. Or I don't know. We're not talking about right. capturing four K at this stage. Cool. And also, how about the pictures? Uh, that's, of course, also HDR. Yeah, so, so um, because of the fact that we can, do, um, we can do it in real time and there isn't the multiple exposures, we can do burst picture. Because today, as I said, you take two pictures and then there's post-processing. So that whole process takes two to five seconds, right? We, just, we can go snap, 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 snap in pictures uh, in, in real time. We can do with flash, because today you can't do HDR and flash together. Those are mutually exclusive. And as I said, we can do it in video. Nice. Another, another feature of, uh, of the computational photography architecture is the ability to track specific objects. So this is something we call tap to track. So with today's camera phones and tablets, if you, I, can, I can select something in the scene. Let's say I want to take a picture of this, of this building. But if I recompose the picture, or if the person in the scene moves, then, I, then the, ex exposure, the auto exposure kicks in. So what we've done is enable the person to, to select an object in the picture, and now I can move, I can recompose the, the picture, and, that's, and, and focus and exposure is maintained. I can even, even have the, that picture go out of, out of the, the frame, and when it comes back into the frame, it's still selected. It's persistent tap to track until we turn it off or select something else. With, so with a typical, uh, so now look at this scene. I've got this bright background. This is still main, maintaining the focus and exposure. If I turn it off, that's what you get with the, with the standard camera. That's awesome. Uh, so people are using their smartphones for photos of family and friends, but it's still better to use a DSLR and all that, but at which point do you think that uh, flat optics are going to be good enough for uh, taking pictures of your babies and they don't get angry 20 years later and say, why didn't you use a bigger camera? I, I think there's, there's two things that have to happen. I think the, what we're solving first is the, the computational uh, side. There's tons that you can do on the processor to, to ensure that your favorite feature on your camera phone is not the delete button, right? That you're actually happy with the pictures that you take. Optics are, you know, that, that, I mean, there's only so much space. So, so will a camera phone take pictures the same as a you know, $3,000 DSLR with an $8,000 lens? No. It will never happen because you've got you know, sheer size of the, of, the, of the lens and you've got optics. That's not going to happen. Will this be good enough to, so that you'll be you know, pleased with these and happy with these 10, 20 years from now? Absolutely. Do you think that most of the pictures and video people are going to take with Tegra 4 devices is going to be HDR? HDR has a, is, a, is, a, um, is a cool feature. I think there's lots of HDR scenes, but HDR isn't something that you need for every single picture. I mean, so we'll have the ability to have it always on if you want it on, but there are times when, when you don't need it. So when you have times you don't need it, we can turn it off. Cool. All right. So, uh, Tegra 4, how soon is the market? Uh, oh, you still have oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. How soon for Tegra 4 devices? Yeah. Uh, so we know for we'll see uh, our Project Shield will be shipping in Q2. Um, we can't really you know, comment on when other our partners are shipping. That's up to them to, to determine. Tegra 4i devices, we'll see uh, see them start to come out before the end of the year, and and many more coming out in early 2014. Nice. And in theory, you could get into cameras, right? You can get into Absolutely. That could be a pretty cool so to answer your, yeah to answer your question, having this processor and a high-end DSLR would answer all the questions you've had. But it's not 4K video. Uh, it's I mean, that's a good question. We may that's not a, that's that's a question of uh, what's capable of on the processing side. Can we capture 4K video? 
we can decode for it. We can decode, decode, it. Yeah. decode it on the fly. Yeah. So actually, beyond even even beyond that, what we're showing over here is we're showing decode of of 1080p. Our, our downscaling to 1080p and native de decode to uh, 4K stream simultaneously using a four, uh, using a uh, Tegra 4 tablet. Yes, that's that's one video stream, you know, 1080p on the panel and 4K on the 84-inch 4K display with awesome. one Tegra 4. Awesome. Uh, thanks a lot for improving our pictures and videos. My pleasure. Very cool. Thank you.